because he's been so crucial today. And over for Fnatic's side, at least against Soaz, I wouldn't be surprised at seen being taken away. Maybe a Bane? If they're, if they're kind of scared to play against it, but we're going to see. So you're totally wrong. I got one. You should have cheated. I got one. Uh, Evelyn so far banned out against Diamond. He's been a terror with that misfortune. Comfort champion for Genjo, and he's fallen back to play in yep. the MF a little bit more. And Thresh taken away there again. I got Boydle. one out of six. Other side, <laughs> Ari, Kennen, Twisted Fate. One out of six, not bad. Shen, though, is going to be first pick here for Fnatic. And we're... That was quick from Do Gambit. It. Zach and Lee Sinban uh, picked up here for uh, Gambit. And obviously Diamond fallen back into that Lee Sin play once again. Switched it out to Evelyn for a couple of games, but with that ban, he's now back in there. Yeah, he still did work with his uh, Lee Sin when he played it earlier on yesterday, but so was on Shen. He's made no secret he doesn't like playing Shen. Is it going to be so as on Shen? Last time we saw him playing Shen that. was Yellow Star. Then we had a Blitzcrank pick, which was Soaz, and he went down into that bottom lane to support uh, Pushu. So that's possible here. I'm not sure if it really will go that way since we've seen a Sona now locked in here and a Varus for Pushu. Okay, so we're going to see, looks like Darian on that Zac in the top lane. However, I think we've actually seen Alex play it once middle, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but, ooh, we're going to see that Zyra Ash combo in that bottom lane that we've seen over with Cloud9 in North America. And for Varus, it's. I mean, why not play it with Pushu? He's 5-8 and eight with it uh, prior to their game earlier on today. And I really am curious what they're going to lock in for the rest of it, because Expeke, he has the potential to be counterpicked here, so he has to pick very safe. Yeah, very safe pick, which not going to be an Aria, of course. There's no Twisted Fate left in there either. So will he go for the likes of an Ariana, maybe? That's what I was thinking. I, I mean, he plays a lot of Lissandra as well, but mm -hmm. I'm kind of hoping for a Zed to be picked up somewhere. Most likely it would be on Alex, but... The Sandra with their whole composition wouldn't be that bad, but neither would an Orianna when you have kind of a ball delivery system with Shen, and then you have, you know, the Orianna to follow him with the Crescendo, but that Aatrox gets locked in, that will be Cyanide in the jungle with it. And a Cassid in here for Xpeke. We know what he can do with that champion, as uh, SK certainly know about, and it's going to be a Zed pickup for Gambit. You kind of called that one, so I'll, I'll let you. I'll let it slide from the bands that you, you completely missed out. Bands were terrible. Uh, but again, Genja going to be bringing the Ash to the table this time around. Voidal, who's really impressed, who's really stepped up here this week for uh, Gambit, going to be running that Zyra for the first time as well. Mm -hmm. Hasn't played it just yet, so curious to see how it's going to work out. I mean, obviously with that combo, you have a lot of range built in. You have, you know, the the volley. You have the grassy roots out of Zyra. You have the harass out of the plants. So. They're going to have a very strong lane. I want to know where it's exactly going to go, though. Will they put it up against Soaz, or will they go up against Pushu and Yellowstar? And I would imagine they want to would want to keep it 2v2. But the real thing is, Alex versus Xpeke, Zed versus Cassid, and Peke is running teleport, so he's not looking necessarily for any kills in that middle lane. But we know how, how good Alex is on Zed. We know how good Alex is on Zed. We know how good Peke is on Cassid, and we know how good a lot of these players are and a lot of champions <laughs> that they've got and that's the beauty coming into this game that you know both teams are safely qualified now four games come next week this game pretty much just deciding which order they will end up going in um if gambit win they will actually take a uh, for them a lovely second place and that would be amazing for them however fanatic they're actually up 3-0 in the series so they gotta feel good coming into this but They've never played Gambit this this split like they're playing right now. So we have a very good game here, and I really want to see what's going to happen um, overall. Well, we just saw Diamond on your screen briefly. He's going to be coming back in towards this leasing. So as they're on the end for the top lane of playing his Shen, which he's been very vocal about. He does not like playing this Shen, even to the extreme of swapping it out for <laughs> uh, a Yellow Star, the support player now, former AD carry, picked up that Shen for the top lane earlier on here in the summer split. That's not going to be happening today, though. We'll see how Soaz goes about things, and uh, hopefully he's feeling a little bit better by this game as well. And Joe, remember, this is a clash of the titans. Think back to that spring split when they played in the finals to that yeah. five-game series, Panak going 3-2 up in that. And there's a lot of history between these two teams, and it's going to be an, an insane game. I mean, I guarantee both these teams know exactly what the other one's going to do, but how will they execute? It's going to be a little bit of a different story. And I, I will say this right in the beginning, because I don't want to say it after he does anything, but sign on an Aatrox, I'm not really convinced by it. 
I don't know. I'm not convinced by Aatrox in general in the jungle. Well, we're going to find out how he goes with this one. It's Fnatic versus Gambit. Our final game of the regular season, at least here for the summer split. As I said, at least one tiebreaker to come up between SK and Alternate after this. But we'll figure out the rest as and when we actually get there. Level one, Jason, take us through. We've got the likes of the Zyra grasping root, which could affect things. Yeah, and not to mention the Ash 100% crit chance with the volley yes. mixed in by Genja. They have a very strong team at level one, mixed in with the Lee Sin, who have those two abilities at that rank. And also the grasping roots, just like you're saying. I mean, that could lock down the entire team of Fnatic. They don't really have much of a response, but they do have a lot of damage in Aatrox. He hurts so bad at level one. You can never underestimate him. And he started a Dorn's Blade. So he's going to hurt even more, but luckily for your Gambit, they do have wards down, so they will spot exactly where they're going to go. Yeah, and it looks like we're going to have that lane switch coming in here as well. Genja and Voidal are both at the top side of the map. They're going to be spotted by a ward. And if Fnatic wanted this 2v2, then they would have a, a decent opportunity now to actually switch that around before the minions really start getting into the lane. But it looks like they're quite content going 2v1 with Soaz up top. I'm not sure they've actually spotted necessarily or for, for gambit ward. side for, Ga no, for gambit side exactly where um fanatic's bottom lane is so we're actually gonna vote come out the oh. corner he could get caught here oh he's gonna face check there are three men there voidal what are you doing he's gonna go down first blood comes into fanatic costly error right from the get-go and it went over to cyanide however because it was so late that means he's not gonna be able to go back and spend that money to use it in the jungle so if anything it doesn't hurt that bad but giving an Aatrox, who's a very early game jungler, that first kill gives him such a strong advantage. Brilliant start for Fnatic. Couldn't have really uh, planned it any better themselves as they waited in there, knowing that 2v1 was coming in. And well, we've seen Voidal, let's not forget, last time we saw Gambit on red was when the uh, um, Eve from Diamond actually took away EG's blue buff, and Voidal did exactly that move that he just did right there. So. Is that preparation? It certainly looked like it to me from Fnatic's side, and that will give that first blood over. An assist as well to Cassidy and to Shen. Yeah, there's a little bit of early extra gold. They still can't spend it just yet, but when they do go back and buy, it's to make him even stronger when they get to lane, as long as they can continue CSing. But Voto, he didn't blow any summoners. So luckily for him, he didn't get forced out of any escape mechanism. So if he gets, gets ganked top lane, he'll obviously have that. But Soaz did commit his Ignite, so it kind of reduces his kill potential in that top lane. However, he's in a 1v2, so he doesn't really have much anyways. And right now, I want to see how this develops, because we have Soaz with the assist, with the Doran shield. We have Darren with nothing just yet, with the Doran shield. But he also has three CS because he cleared, I believe, the Wolf Camp. So hit level two, and he cannot possibly push out of lane right now. Yeah, that's probably not good news for him. We see there that with Genja... And Voidal really pushing that lane right up there onto the turret, trying to throw Soaz off a little bit. Being able to get some damage down as well as preventing him getting in there and uh, picking up that CS, which he certainly is missing a little bit under the turret. And that's always good news for Gambit, whose uh, solo laner himself is having some real troubles. And now Cyanide is down bottom, maybe looking to get in for an opportunity. Yeah, and if anything, he's just going to hold that, that. I think he's just going to be there to hold the turret, just be near in case we do see Cyanide come in to kind of turn this around. And as we can tell, he's currently in that bush, but I don't really think Darian's going to overcommit. I think maybe expecting uh, Diamond to come in, then he wants to turn around that gank, but not able to make that happen. And remember, Gambit versus SK that we saw yesterday. Gambit completely outsmarted them by freezing the lane against Kevin when he was playing Zac, so he couldn't actually farm, actually he wasn't playing Zac, he was playing Aurelia. He couldn't farm up at all, but right now they haven't been able to make that play happen. Darren, he is level four. It looks like he actually wants to go in for a gank here. This could be terrible. Yeah, going in there, but Cyanide is actually just around the corner, and Darian, is he going to get his passive pop? Yes, he is, but right under the turret, and Cyanide, he's going to get his passive pops as well. Crazy, crazy start to this one, but the kills landed. He's gone in, Diamond picks up the kill, and Darian is going to walk away. What a turnaround by Gambit. Wow. Just, wow. Diamond saying that he doesn't, you know, Lisa's not that strong. Kind of just proved himself right there as he came back in and he got his double buffs refreshed. He gave Darian an assist. He is able to keep him alive. Now Darian's actually going to get quite a bit more CS here. And he's going to go back and buy it. And it's going to be hard for Fnatic to make any sort of play like that happen again. And now Sonic, with that early death, that early advantage he got because of that kill, has gone to waste. 
And Alex in the middle lane doing a great job of harassing down Xpeke, who started uh, Cloth Armor and the pots there, just trying to negate some of that damage that had obviously come in from Alex H Z. Oh, man. And that is bad news for him there, because Alex is already building up a hefty CS lead, Jason. Yes, he is. Was, he's actually very close to level 6 right now, and I'm curious if he's going to go in for some crazy harass onto him when he does hit that point, but... Oh, they know where Cyanide is. Oh, They're actually going to go across here. Are they going to be able to do anything about him? No, Q going to land and look, look how low he's gone already. Doran's blade start for Diamond. He's got those double buffs on as well, which are obviously going to be helping out somewhat, but he's going to be stealing away jungle, causing all kinds of havoc. Wow, and this is not a good start for Fnatic. And remember, they kind of needed this win to make a lot of things happen. I mean, they are secured, but still, I'm not exactly sure where they're going to be in the standings. And Diamond, he's... He's made his mark on the jungle right now. He's going wherever he pleases, and Sina can't do anything about it. No, can't do a, a thing about it. And he's almost at level six here as well, Oh, he's Diamond, in a gank, Pekka. Which is so, so dangerous. It looks like they are going to try and come in there on the back side. Is he going to go for it? No, he's not, but Alex is going to go for it. There is a death mark down. Can they get the final shot? The Q not quite landing there from Diamond. He's going to take three big hits from the turret. Cyanide comes in, get the one kill, and what? Alex is going to go down as well. And talk about turnarounds. Fnatic doing it now in the middle. Wow, what? Cyanide being in the right place at the right time. He wasn't in bottom lane a little bit earlier, but right there. He gets Toe Bus back again. That, those Toe Bus have been traded around so much in Gambit. In the meantime, they're going to take that top turret, but Peke, Sanai, great bait by them, great turnaround. And they're actually going to get a Dragon off of this too, it looks like. Yep, no jungle, no mid laner. Easy Dragon here for Fnatic. Really well done for them. And that will be a solid pickup, and it's going to give them a 500 gold lead. And those two kills here for Cyanide, his early game going to be very, very strong. You saw the damage that he puts down at this stage, and getting those double buffs back as well is always a bonus. Yes, it is. And I wonder what he's going to build into next. He's going to continue down that damage path or go towards tankiness, because they do have Soaz, obviously, so they don't necessarily need it. But when he does dive into the back of a team, like he kind of needs to be able to survive a couple of hits here, especially with Alex right there. But with that top tier going down now, we're going to see Genja and Voido go bottom here. So we're going to have the AD carry supports match up. And with the CC that Gambit has when they hit level 6, I'm I'm pretty scared for Fnatic. However, both of them were only at level 5, and they both have those good level 6 ultimates to really contribute to a fight. So if the junglers visit that bottom lane, expect some kills to happen. Well, mid lane, Alex getting that blue buff, and uh, Darian here, he's going to come down, drops a ward straight on top of Cyanide. Uh, if they could contest that, if they can keep that away from Xpeka, that'd be perfect. But we do see Diamond in that bottom lane right now. He's going to go for a, a fight here. He is going to try and push through from that one. And there we see it. Roots actually not quite landing. Bush who flashed away, though. So no flash for the AD carry. He's got to be more defensive now. I'm actually curious, where did that arrow go? Because it was used, but was it hit? Because that should be pretty easy. Oh, it actually was used, but Push was able to get out of it in time because it was a close range arrow. So stun didn't last forever. But Diamond's still level six now. He's still trying to keep his mark on the jungle. You see him pick up another Doran's Blade and that machete because he obviously going to build into a, a spirit item. Or actually, I believe that's a Riggles a little bit later on. No, a spirit item, sorry. And he wants to be able to control still. However, Sunai picks up Boots Mobility, so he's going to be able to roam around the map a lot quicker than Diamond. Look at Darian here bullying so as he's level down on him. Both men got Doran Shield, the Negatron Cloak in there for Darian, who's actually behind on the farmers. We are going to see Cyanide here going in towards Diamond, but Diamond kicks him away, gets his red buff, and says, well, he can have the small uh, minions there. That's fine. Yeah, but you just saw how much damage Cyanide can do with just still one Doran's Blade. Even uh, Diamond returned it back onto him here, but Alex, they continue farming. He has a huge lead over Xpeki right now, over double his CS, but now we have Cyanide coming in for a gank. Are they going to be able to lock him down? Nope. Slippery is that Z. <laughs> There's like, doesn't nah, even go for it. We're not going to be able to pull that one off. Let's just be uh, content with him knowing that we're in the general area and he'll have to uh, watch out for that. Or will he? He's just kind of pushed up there and uh, being a general nuisance that Alexic does so well. And look at Gambit. They 3 1 behind the kills. They lost the first dragon, but they're still bang level in gold. I think that's all due to mid lane. Yeah. Look at that lead is just crazy right now. And if Alex keeps this up, he is just going to hurt too much. And I don't think Xpeke can survive that burst much longer if he's able to build up another item or two. But we do have that Ash Arrow back up and available. Diamond's coming down towards that bottom lane. You don't have Flash on Pushu, so he's not going to be able to escape this time. And even uh, Diamond did pick up Boots and Mobo, so he's actually trying to get around the map as fast as Cyanide is. Problem is, though, there's no pink ward for Voidal, and there's a ward down on Fnatic's side here 
on that bottom side of the map. But if they try and get a ward of their own here, Fnatic on the top side or step just a little bit too far oh, out of the line, no. it could be dangerous. There is Cyanide coming through, and this should be obvious here. There is a Flash Crescendo. They see that Diamond's coming in here. There is the Chain of Corruption coming down as well, but in the end, a whole lot of nothing. Look where Darien is. He's yeah, coming down Darien. the bottom lane as well. Or to Dragon. Or to Dragon. Or to not. He's just come down because he can. He's got the turret down in that top lane. Cyanide actually waiting in here. And Darien goes back towards mid lane and Alex is just calling back. So, a whole lot of nothing happening there in that bottom lane. Genjo, you have Hawk shot. You should, you should send something up. This could be terrible for him. He does have his flash and barrier, but he can't escape the three men that is Fnatic waiting for him in that bottom bush. And did he spot him? I'm not sure that he did. He's going to have to flash away. That's what Hawkshot was built for. It was, but now they're going to push his turret down. So Fnatic can be able to take a turret back for themselves, and there's not much that Kenja can do about it here. No, and that's really, really bad news here for Gambit. Although, then it'd be uh, one to one on the turrets. But with that, Fnatic going to extend that gold lead, slight gold lead that they've built up for them. It's now a thousand after that one. So, what's Diamond going to do with you? Sniffing around by that bottom side of the map. Nothing really for the taking, though. And Alex, he picked up a Brutalizer middle. So I'm curious, is he going to go and... Actually, he could burst combo him down right now if he does just land his ultimate and the Ignite. He's just waiting for Expecky to pop a Rift Walk, maybe, and then just to go for it. Yeah. Let's see. I don't want to get the death mark in there and have uh, Peke just walk away from it. So I'm going to time that one right. In terms of CS, he's certainly timing that right. 109 to 67. Big lead for him. We are going to see Voidal caught out of position. What is Voidal doing there? I don't know. I think he wanted to come down and ward. But he doesn't have any more wards on him. So I he doesn't have any wards yet. I think he exactly. put a pink ward over the ridge. Oh, there's Xpeke actually death marks on him, but that's not going to be enough damage to get the kill. He did exactly what we thought and Rift walked away. And I think I think he was just trying to ward, but he got a pink ward over the wall. That was about it. And he got caught. It's great timing by Fnatic to be there. I mean, Sonic was there waiting for it. And now Diamond's in position to get Xpeke. If you see that Q land with Diamond, that's a dead Cassidy. Yes. Diamond got no real qualms about following up for that one. Here we go. We're going to see him come around the side. Q is going to land, but Xpeki already walking back to the depths of his, uh, behind his towers there. And with Yellow Star coming around with the cover that they had from Cyanide, not going to go for it. Blue buff instead will be the target for Gambit. Okay, and we're going to see a key point developed for Gambit here in terms of their boot camp and how it worked out. Every game so far we've seen for them the Super Week, they've had a lead. A strong lead at this point in the game. So Genja, I mean, obviously didn't need to keep farming bottom, grouped up, and they forced fights. But now they're actually behind. And I want to know, are they going to fall back to their old ways? Is Genja going to keep split pushing by himself? Or are they going to group up and try to take his advantage back? And Dragon is available now, and that might be that point of contention where Soaz has been left alone on the top lane, farming up pretty well. And I really want to know what's going to happen here because it's anyone's game. Well, Dragon is there. Right now, they've got no pink ward down, so they don't know if Fnatic have vision. That one coming over the back will obviously signal that that is the <laughs> only ward now going to be there for Fnatic, but Gambit are going to be able to pick it up. But will Fnatic try and take this mid turret? No, they won't. Yeah, I don't think they have that, that possibility. It hasn't even been touched yet because of uh, Alex Peak keeping pushed up this entire time. But we do have Peck actually visiting top lane, so it looks like they want to push that turret down. and. I think they might be able to get it here. Yeah, I'm not sure if uh, Gambit will be able to reply to this one quick enough, actually. Uh, certainly doesn't look like they will. So, that turret going to be taken uh, down with this one. A second minion wave coming in to offer them that extra cover. Gambit, in the meantime, just securing their red buff there so that no one drops down from top and steals that one away. And Genji going back to his triple Dorn Blades. Standard. That's worked out for him uh, this week already. Let's see if it keeps doing that. He does have a CS lead over uh, Pushu. And obviously with his Hawk shot, he should be getting extra gold per CS, which he does have a lead right now. Small lead nonetheless, though. And Alex hasn't been really effective just yet. I mean, he's been farming really well, but he hasn't been picking up kills like he usually does. And he's actually 1-4 and four with Zed over this, this split. Not good stats, but we know how good of a Zed he is. We know how good of an Assassin player he is. Yeah, and he's going to have to step it up this game by now. I mean, they're 4-1 behind there. 
Well, just think, they're not even a thousand gold behind, and that just shows you what Gambit are really good at, is keeping that farm going, even though you might not always realize it. Gendra, in particular, is always great at doing that job for them. Right now, Fnatic actually pushing in towards this middle outer turret. Are we going to see Gambit go in onto them? We are seeing Darien actually coming down. Gendra has moved over from the side, and he's, unfortunately for them, stood on top of a wall, and that signaled Fnatic to back off somewhat. And we have to remember that Gambit, they're fighting for their guaranteed second place in the playoffs, which means, or sorry, in the a playoffs, buy. in the season, they get a yeah, buy into the next round. That means they're in season four right away. They're guaranteed. So they have a lot on the line here. And they have to pretty much pull out all the stops. And just like you said, I mean, we've seen this so many times with Gambit, even uh, throughout the season, that you can have a killing over them, but they're always going to keep up in terms of just general gold because they're CSing so well. And that's what they continue to do here as well. We've slowed down a little bit now. I think that was to be uh, expected after that last dragon was picked up. The outer towers pretty much all falling down there as well. And Fnatic holding strong in middle. Gambit got a big group in there as well. It's kind of a bit of a face-off in mid. But Gambit do have the strongest initiate in the game. With that Ash arrow, if it does land. We do have Peke actually farming up double golems right now. And he does have his teleport to get into this fight. And the other star, yeah, obviously has that flash crescendo, which can be so strong. We've seen Gambit use it so well with, uh, back when Edward was playing with them. And we know Yellow Star can make those things happen. And here we go, Gambit, they're going to go for the turret. Well, it doesn't Eventually. need much damage, does it? It is very, very low here, but a little bit scared of getting too close and then having Soaz torn in there, or flash torn in there, he can make up that kind of ground. Peke is down at the bottom, so it would be a five versus four, but he now has uh, that teleport available as well. So he goes home, kind of spend up, and then he can be straight back to mid if he needs to. Yeah, and this is a really crucial point in the game where Gambit, they need to make something happen because they're allowing x Peke to farm up. He was behind a lot more than 40 CS earlier on. And if he keeps at this, he'll become very strong. He'll have his Rada Ages done. And he'll be able to come in here and just snipe people left and right. <laughs> still they sit. Still they camp. And it's going to be x actually moving off towards that top lane now. So uh, he's like, yeah, let's just farm. Let's just push that one out. No real problem. Gambit started to kind of saunter off from mid and then realize, wait a minute, we can't do that. Fnatic will push our tower. So we'll just go back there and we'll stand. And just going back to farm. I mean, he doesn't really have any major item completed just yet compared to Pushy, who has that Bloodthirster. And Genji, he's sitting on 1,500 gold right now, but... And that could be the three Doran's Blades. Exactly, because he invested so heavily into that work. He bought two extra compared to Pushy. As he uh, has been doing as well. Really liking those uh, triple Doran's Blade starts. Not really a, a, a stale mid stack up here. Actually, Gendra has gone down bottom now. We saw Darian actually leave that lane, but I don't think Fnatic are really too comfortable with going in there for a try at it either. Blue Wolf's going to be giving over to Alex Hitch, though. And this game, definitely a lot slower pace than even the game we just saw prior with SK and NIP, but still a lot at stake here. Darian, he has finished up his Spirit Visage, and yep, yeah, I mean, there's no real split pushing happening right now. It's if Xpeke goes, then Genji goes, or right now if Xpeke goes, then you see Alex going. And both teams are really hesitant to force that fight. And as we said, the, in terms of what's on the line here, both teams are qualified, but actually, it's really about more than that, because Fnatic then, I believe with the ties going on, could still win out with the second place after everything. But if Gambit win, they take that second place. So yep. that's what really they're fighting for. They're fighting for on Gambit's side, the buy. On Fnatic's side, the chance to yeah. get the buy. And the thing is, if they win, there's four teams tied. Gambit, EG, Fnatic, NIP. So anyone could really be up at that uh, second place point. So we'll see how it goes. And Fnatic, I mean, they haven't been looking that strong this weekend. I mean, I, no. I, I feel safe to say it. I mean, they're one in three. The game they did win against Mutual Bakers early on today was very close where MWM had a strong lead. and. They have to come together as a team right now and, and win this game if they want that potential chance to skip through. Well, in this game, at uh, this present moment for the last six minutes, nothing has happened. We've seen a couple of guys headed off towards the outer lane just to push them on through. Genja's done that. We've seen X Peke doing that to the bottom. We've seen Alex doing it. We see now Soaz headed to the bottom lane. But this is the difference now. The Dragon is in play. 
And Alex and Genja are both not particularly right there in the immediate area. And they need to be careful here about positioning because Fnatic are likely to turn, either go straight to Dragon or out position them and take that mid turret. Yeah, that is a very likely possibility. Genja knowing that you take this route for free, so maybe they do want to go for a fight very soon. And they're standing on wards right now. They don't have any pinks. They don't have an Oracle. They do have good control. Of, uh, they do, do, uh, do have good vision. But still, I mean, Fnatic has some vision there as well. They know where they are. Genja hasn't been spotted just yet. But they see four members of Gambit here. We have Xpeki top and who can teleport in on top. And here we go, here fight's we go. breaking out. We're gonna see you going in for this one. Alex going straight on towards Pushu. He's gonna get Stan United to help out. There's a crescendo. The arrow came in from the side. Cyanide had his passive popped here from this one and they're still fighting away. Alex has now finished off Cyanide. Here comes Xpeke, but he's made a grave mistake. Goes too deep. Did get one kill on his way through. Can Ganja come in here? Darian gonna dive on top. They want to take Pushu, but the taunt lands on towards Genja. He's gonna have to use barrier. So as well flashing for the kill. And now Boydell going to try and oh. run away. Darian slams the fist into Pushu at the back. And he's not done just yet, Darian. He wants a kill on towards, so uh, on towards Yellow Star. And he's going to get it. I'm not sure if he can battle Soaz, though, who now has both buffs on him from a little bit earlier. And there's another taunt. There is a passive. Is he going to be able to take that one down? Probably will with that Sunfire Cape in there as well. Just one more chunk of goo. And there is another kill. So we end with a... Ace for ace. Fnatic. Yeah, a very delayed ace overall, but it was five for four in the end. Yeah, Crazy. it was. And Gambit did pick up Dragon off of that, so look at they came out ahead in terms of that. Alex picked up one kill. Unfortunately, Voido picked up two of the kills right there. Yeah. Um, and Darian got one of them, so it didn't work out exactly how they wanted to, but still coming out ahead nonetheless, getting the extra gold over them. And it actually takes them to pretty much dead even at this point. And that was that was a fight with Fnatic actually missing the chain of corruption. Xpeke mm -hmm. actually dove in too far, and you saw all of Gambit turn instantly when they saw that happen. And a little bit of a, I'd say it wasn't a perfect fight out of Fnatic, but still an ace. A few more items being picked up after that as well. Obviously, the Sunfire Cape was already there for Soaz. He's now working up towards and, and working well towards that Randuin's Omen. On the other side, Spirit Visage haunting guys for Darian, so he's going to be nice and tanky with that extra damage as well. The mid laners. See Rod of Ages. You see Kazarm God blasting one for Peke. Other side is the Blade of the Ruin King. Brutalizer coming out for Alex. They're going to try and get in on towards this turret. And they may just do it. Well, they're going to see them fight here. Darian right underneath the turret. He's bouncing around. Done good damage. But well, look at this. Peke is coming in from the side. There is the kill on towards one. Diamond, is he going to fall here? He's gone very, very low. But they change targets. Go towards Alex. He's going to get himself a double kill. But then falls afterwards to Soaz. Peke dives underneath the turret. Soaz gets the toy on towards Voidal. He is he going to fall yes he's gonna fall yellow star gets that one and peke gets one at the back and that will be another ace in quick succession here to uh, to fanatic wow back to back and the thing was gambit they wanted to dive because the turret was low but that chain of corruption that came out of push you blocked them all down so they couldn't kill a turret and because of that darian dropped extremely low in health but i just piled on on top of them able to pick up those kills and two back-to-back -back aces like that Four kills in, in the end going over to Xpeke, five kills over to Soaz. Uh, the items that they're going to be able to pick up from this, the goal that they have from this is just ridiculous, and they're going to come back even stronger. So now Gambit, they're in a very, a very bad position. For this game. Yes. That's, you know, it's not the end of the day if they, uh, the end of the world, sorry. Well, it might be the end of the it's day both. for them. Uh, uh, no, they have to not, play more. Uh, not quite, yeah. We'll see. All right, now we go back to a bit more of a passive time, and that's what I thought after that last day, uh, the, the ace before the last ace. Then another one happens pretty much straight away. It was an interesting choice from Gambit. They wanted to take that turret, so they kind of just dove in there right underneath it. Peke came in from the side then. I don't think they were quite ready for that. I, I think it was all that chain of corruption because that lockdown, Genji could not hit the turret, and Dan unfortunately got just too low and ended up falling from that. But now Alex still farming up pretty well. Uh, again, just still has a lead in CS, not obviously leading gold overall, but we're coming to that point where Cassin, he's ramping up with his items, got the Rod of Ages completed, got the Cirrus Embrace on the way with that Archangel Staff, which is actually very close to finishing, and even Seeker's Arm Guard, so he's going to actually be able to work towards that zone just very soon, and that means Alex Ultimate's not going to do diddly squat to him, yeah. and that means Pushu, he has to stay alive, 
And if he does that, we have a very high chance of winning these fights. Possible bad times on the horizon for Gami. I mean, I say on the horizon, pretty much right in front of their face. They just got aced twice in a <laughs> row, so uh, <laughs> might be a bit of underestimation as to what I'm saying on that front. But either way, they're going to gather up here in that middle area once again. Black Cleaver has now come in there for Alex at this point. And the thing is, is that Soaz cannot be stopped right now. 506 with the Renners, with the Sunfire Cape, with the Spirit Visage on the way. Genji can't do much damage to him. Alex doesn't have a Last Whisper. He has a Black Cleaver, which helps, but can't do much damage because of that. Uh, Darian is actually building Magic Pen with that Haunting Guy Sword Boots, so he'll actually do a good amount of damage overall to the enemy team. But right now, I mean, their big players are Alex and Genja, and they're just not able to do that damage when Soaz is just going to sit in front of your team. So, Fnatic, what's their next target? Dragon is coming up in 45 seconds from this one. That would certainly be a welcome addition to the Fnatic gold lead, which is currently at 2,000. And Soaz is starting to get that split push running in. You know, this is typical Fnatic that they, they always used to do. You know, they've got the Cassidy who can do that with his high mobility. The Shen's going to be able to do it. This is something that they've really done very often and was a key successful strategy of theirs a lot of the time. And that's what kind of made him win versus Michi Makers early on. Remember that Baron play where four members of Fnatic sat at Baron? Heck on Twisted Fate just teleported into those inhibitors and Alex, he actually is going to die here. Yeah, he's not going to survive that whatsoever. So as dominated, and that just shows you, can't actually do anything against him here. And Fnatic are on a massive roll right now in terms of kills. Two aces coming in. They've just picked up Alex there. They're going to go through and quite possibly do some good damage to this inhibitory. And this kind of shows the state of the game where Alex, when does he ever back away from a fight in a split push in a 1v1? Never on, on on any champion, pretty much. And he realizes how he cannot do damage to Soaz. But wow, the poke coming out of Fnatic yeah. is forcing Gambit to back off. Stranglethorn's going to be thrown out here. Didn't particularly do a lot as Darian is going to use Let's Bounce as well. But Gambit have come off worse than uh, out of that one. Expecting again going to Rift Walk in. He's not scared to dive in underneath those two uh, turrets using the Rift Walk to go in rather than out. Yeah, he's also level 17 too, so he pretty much has well, almost yeah. full ranks of everything. He's pretty tanky at this point, and when he realizes the rest of the game would have to back away, if he keeps poking like that over and over, he knows, you know, Genja he has a bloodthirster, but he can't really sustain against that consistent damage with that blue buff uh, expected. So another turret going over Fnatic, another ta or sorry, Dragon going over to Fnatic, and their gold lead, it's extending further and further. It's been pretty close for like 20 minutes of this game, but that back-to-back -back ace, that Dragon right there kind of spreads it out a little bit, and we're going to start seeing a lot of discrepancies in terms of items across the board. Yeah, that hold really coming in nicely for them. <laughs> Probably only going to get worse at this stage, you have to feel, for Gambit as well. And they're going to try and finally get this turret. I'm not sure that Fnatic are quite ready to give it up, though. It's been the scene of uh, a couple of massacres, this mid lane, <laughs> in Fnatic's hands. And the thing is about Gambit, they usually like to be in control of the game. And Fnatic's been able to take it out of their hands, and this is where Gambit kind of struggles a little bit, but they've been very good at finding that one crack in the enemy team's shell and been able to take advantage of that. But right now, with the difference, I'm not sure they can find that crack. I mean, they're an amazing team. They've looked fantastic after this boot camp, so they have that potential. But with the way Fnatic's playing, it's it's pretty much complete opposite of what they've been doing this uh, whole weekend. Yeah, and I'm not sure it's about finding the crack or wondering if there is a crack right now for Fnatic. And figuring out exactly what that is going to be and how they're going to exploit it because this is a this is a different looking Fnatic team to what we've really seen yep. this weekend. Definitely. They've, they've really had a, a strong talk about this one. You can see that they're certainly uh, on the way back to being their former selves. It seems like they feel a lot more comfortable playing Gambit considering they've played them for years now, it, it feels like. So, you know, they, they have a better understanding of how they play, what their tendencies are, and... Right now, Fnatic, they're kind of setting up here for a potential fight. They do have Oracle on Yellow Star, so he's able to throw a lot of wards here. And Gambit, they're going to lose control of their jungle very soon. Yeah, Gambit. I'm going to try and stop this attack on the top in and sorry. Well, they thought about it. Darian kind of charged things up there with the Elastic Slingshot. And in the end, I think they decide, okay, Alex is not here. Diamond, Voidal, they're not here. Let's just give that one up. We have to let that one go. Fnatic, as such, going to be gaining that control over the jungle. There was a Q in from Diamond, which couldn't be followed up. Double award from uh, 
Gambit. That just shows that communication is maybe not there. We know that Gambit are a team when they fall behind, they they really don't gel well. They, I think Darian is a prime example of communication in terms of the team when they go behind. Uh, they, they seem to give up a lot of time when they fall, you know, a, a large portion behind them. Double warning for me is just all about communication. Yeah. And, you know, what, what's at stake? We've seen Gambit so many times just across many different events, many different tournaments, that when they realize there's nothing on the line from the game, really, then they, they play more casual. But when playoffs are on the line, even though they're now in so they can kind of relax, their spot in the percentages aren't necessarily locked in. So they need to be able to control that that on tilt factor and how they're gonna do it, I'm not necessarily sure. I mean, they're not playing terrible right now. It's just all about Fnatic taking advantage of every possibility. Yeah, I think Fnatic in particular have been outstanding in this game so far. I mean, look at Soaz. We talked about him before this, ill. Why does he hate had, playing Shen? He's so good at it. Not on his best day, he hates playing Shen. And he's 606. And look how tanky he is. He probably can't die at this point. Alex with Zed tried to 1v1 him and pretty much lost out in that 1v1 scenario. Right now, Fnatic are headed towards that inner middle turret. Have Genja back at base. He's going to pick up his eye edge, but he doesn't have any attack speed. I mean, then again, it's Genja. He never builds attack speed, anyways. So he's going to have some good damage, but not enough to deal with Soaz. However, Alex, he does have that last whisper now, Joe. So if we see Soaz dive in alone, he should be able to do a lot more damage to him. However, he won't be able to kill him. No, and the turret doesn't really dent him either. We just saw that fight under the tower, and it's down to about two thirds of its health remaining. And they'll continue to push through this side. I just. Spotting sight of Diamond off to the side. You know, ever since the beginning of the game, you know, where Diamond kind of made his stamp on the game where he got the first kill bottom on the side, or got, not the first kill, but his first kill against Sinai on the bottom. And he was very aggressive with the jungle. He was pushing around Sinai, but that kill that he got back onto him gave him the double bust and gave him that control back. He hasn't been able to really, really shine this game. Fnatic continue to look for the entry in there as well. Both teams have got decent wave cleaver. Here comes Peke right from the side. He's on you away from the Ash Arrow. That'll just go flying off into the distance. There's the Stranglethorns knocking Fnatic up. Yellow Star has gone super low. Was burning from the Ignite. He will be saved. Uh, no, sorry, dead. Not quite saved, but dead. And there is Cyanide getting his blood well pop. But look at that. Fnatic so, so very low. Eh? After that passive facing off in middle for what seemed like a year, they do go and do something riskier like diving on the side. I expect it. That was ooh, the reaction times on that to dodge that arrow was just amazing. We saw Genja actually flash an arrow yeah. uh, the other day. But right now, maybe that's the moment they're waiting for on Gamma's side, waiting for them to push in like that because then they could kind of take advantage of that fight. But Alex, he. He single-handedly got Pushu low, single-handedly got Peke low. He pushed them out of that fight and it allowed the rest of Gambit to really get some damage in there. So, honestly, I think Gambit kind of really came out ahead in that fight because they're able to really show fact that, hey, you guys can't push us around that much. Like, you can't really just force us away from a turret. So you have to play a little bit more passive. And with that, Gambit might be able to get control of the jungle back. They might be able to get that farm that they really need for their items. And oh my god, Joe. Genja. He built a zeal. I think that's the first time in like two splits he's ever built attack speed besides Berserker Grease. I thought the world was coming to an end it, when it might have. then. It might have with that. Well, not, that's a little of exaggeration, but... I'm not sure that's uh, wholeheartedly true. So, Fnatic coming back into it. They're gonna go take themselves a dragon. Easy peasy, no problem there. Wards down around Baron, which we're 34 minutes in. We've seen a Baron at half this time from Gambit already this weekend. Yep. I think we saw like a 16 minute or a 17 minute Baron out of them. 17 in the minutes first day. it was. And also... Which would be half of 34. Nice. I mean, you're, you're math better than mine, apparently. <laughs> but also one thing in terms of Barons, Fnatic in this, in this split are up 4-0 against them. Gambit have yet to take a Baron against Fnatic. So that kind of shows that, you know, Fnatic, they get control of the game and they don't let those Barons slip through and when they do pick them up, they tend to end games. And that's a blue buff actually stolen away by Fnatic. And look at Gambit, they came sniffing for that one. They were thinking they might have 
the opportunity and so as like look how beefy i am i am gonna chase you all the way back to your base hit you q slow me i do not care i am gonna fight you for this one and fanatica going in there cyanide focusing down genja at the backside alex has gone low he's gonna flash over and he managed to kill cyanide there's the arrow going through it's landed onto peke who's gonna zonyas all the damage let's bounce comes in they're gonna follow peke through san united going down and are they gonna get away yes they will disengage comes out from fanatica and they walk away losing just the one man. Wow, Diamond with the next level plays right there. So he kicks Cyanide into his team, or into Genja mostly, but he also applied his Q onto him before he did that. So he knew he'd get attacked by the rest of Fnatic, but then he knew he had an escape mechanism to get out of there because of that Q. So he ended up going back, ends up getting Cyanide very low, ends up saving Genja pretty well, and then they pick up that kill for free. So fantastic job by Gambit to pretty much get any sort of edge they can from any sort of position that they see it. And that's exactly what they need to do to get back in this game and to kind of take control of it yet again. That was... I, if you look at the CS, it's pretty ridiculous at this stage. Well, look at Peke, 340 CS right now. 300 for Alex, 300 for Genja. We're quite a way behind that right now. Yeah, I mean, Peke, he was down double his CS uh, earlier yeah. on the game in the late phase, and he's done a fantastic job of getting that lead back, but Genja, he's only been able to really extend it. Yeah, I mean, we saw Peke moving towards these side lanes pretty much constantly uh, during that 10 minutes or so time that the game was uh, pretty much at a standstill, and that will have certainly helped him get on that total. So he's now Zonya, Zerus and Brace, Rod of Ages in there. He's going towards uh, all the side of Void stuff next. And with all of these objectives taken by Fnatic, with all these turrets taken, Genja is the only person ahead of CS, or ahead of, in total gold to Fnatic in their lanes. And that kind of shows that he's really being a rock that their team can, or that their team can count on. And his items, he got the fan nets are finally completed. He's going to be able to hurt quite a bit now. And when he gets that last whisper, all that tankiness Soas has, which he's actually going for a Thormel right now, won't matter too much. What's <laughs> <laughs> from Yellow Star just... Seen that Q flash be, uh, before his eyes from Diamond. Not sure if he would have dove in after him anyway. Or maybe he would have. Maybe he fancied his chances there, Diamond, of killing him before anyone from Fnatic could react to that one. And we go back to that kind of mid area stalemate that we've had. But the thing is, the last couple of team fights, Fnatic have. Engage themselves, have started themselves. Oh. Look at that burst though onto Alex. He's got nothing left really. And they're gonna actually push back from that. Darian here takes another blast as well. I was wrong about the Void Staff by the way. It was a Rapidons. He was just at the blasting one. I thought it was Void Staff as well, yeah. Joe, don't worry. So he just picked up an Elysee Lord Rod with all that cash that he's been saving and gets himself for Rapidons. How much AP has he got? 742. Damn. <laughs> That's a lot. You saw it right there with Alex, how low he got, how quick that was. That was from just the QE uh, e off of XPK. So he realizes he probably needs some matches or some sort of item to keep him alive. And he has a chain vest, he has a hex drinker, he's spotted in that bottom lane. And Fnatic's like, all right, if you're going to be there, we're going to go for Baron. We're going to bait Baron because XPK has so much damage that anyone that comes up to him, he's going to be able to burst. Yeah, look at that. That's Darian. That's. I don't think he killed before that. He just gets a pretty low. There's the crescendo coming across, and Gambit are going to get absolutely slaughtered there. Darion gets his passive brought down, but that's not going to matter. That's finished off in seconds. And there is Peke chasing double kill. Alex going to go to Peke. Peke actually going to use the Zonyas. Did actually come out of it there before the death mark pop, but that won't matter. Triple kill. Genja actually went so, so low in that as well. Did manage to escape. What Fnatic going to do? They don't know themselves. They're bored. <laughs> that Baron, Tower Baron. Tower, we don't know. They can tank it up. They could probably win the game right here because Soaz can tank the towers. And it's 366 armor as well with that Sona buff. He's going to be able to get this inhibitor down. And right now, Gambit, they're seeing their second spot, their first bye week, or their bye in the first uh, round of the playoffs kind of slipping through their fingers. Obviously, they do have a chance to go for it um, if we have that four way tie happen, which would happen if Fnatic won. I believe they don't because they actually have a, a oh, worse they don't? head to okay. head ratio. Uh, they're behind on head to head to Fnatic, EG, and NIC. So then they would so I believe be they take six spot actually wow. if they lost this game. So that's how close it is, and I'm not the stat man. So uh, we're going to get told that a little bit later on when all the uh, possibilities have actually been worked out once we get to the end of this game. So right now, 
We're closing in on a 10,000 gold lead. Almost double the amount of kills here for Fnatic as well. There it is, Joe. XPK has got to the point where he is pretty much unstoppable. Got his voice stuff finally. He got it eventually. It was going to be in there. But right now, I mean, look at Soas. Another chain vest. He's like, you know what? 366 armor is not enough. I want to sit at 400 flat. So right now, this is just absolutely crazy at this point. So I'm just receiving word that if Fnatic win this one, we're going to have that four-way tie, which will mean six, six games. more games after this. That plus, doesn't plus, include alternate versus yeah. SK. Oh, it does include that one. Okay, so it's oh. five games for the for the four-way tie, plus the sixth game for SK versus alternate, which means we're going to start with SK alternate, we're being told. So we're going to have <laughs> almost double the amount of games coming up here that you've already seen. So definitely cancel your date because don't leave a waiting out in the cold. That is a very bad thing to do, guys. Wow. Jason and does that kind of thing, and then it's not cool. What? That's kind of rude. It is don't very rude. I don't know why you do it. So here we go then. Scumbag. Fnatic moving in towards that inhib turret down in the bottom lane. Um, you can see Peke, he's just itching to dive in there and pretty much just nuke down any single person that he fancies going in for. Gets a ward on top of him. He's like, nope, gonna clear that out. Throw another one over himself. Vision walls going down from this. And there you see, no, Darren, half HP from one burst of Peke there. And now oh. they're going to go in for it. And he has oh, Magnus to spell for this too. Yeah, kind of half and half at this point. Not 100% decided. Are we doing it, guys, or are we not? We're not quite sure here. Guardian Angel for Diamond, by the way, is now complete. But he's just lost half of his health from a piercing arrow. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, guys, guys, come on. The turret does no damage to me. I have bear and I have my shield. It actually doesn't do anything to him. It actually doesn't do anything to him there. There we go. There's the Shirelius pops. Are they going to fight? No, they're just going for the turret. Gambi actually backing away. There is Darian going super, super low. And he's actually going to fall. Crescendo comes in as well. Genja going to be absolutely destroyed as well. Voidal's back there by the fountain. He's still alive. Alex off the other side as well. But right now... Five men are still alive here for Fnatic. They're going to take down the Nexus here, and they're going to beat Gambit, and that's going to force us into this four-way tie for second position, plus the tie for sixth and 